Welcome to this short tutorial on how to make a cover for a print book by using the magic three in one trick with InDesign Creative Cloud 2018. This method saves you from the tedious process of making one file for the front cover, one file for the back cover, and one file for the book's spine. Boring. We can do all three in just one file. Keep in mind that the cover is of course a separate file to the file that contains the book's pages. To keep things simple in this tutorial, let's assume you're creating the cover for an A5 size book. You start by clicking on Create New. When the dialog box opens, go to Print if you're not seeing these options. Click on A4, and I know I said A5, but let me explain. By the way, if you're working in millimetres or inches, you can change it there. But what I'm going down to is to click on Landscape Orientation. So the A4 will be on its side, half will be for the front cover, half will be for the back cover. Hope that makes sense, because we're going to put two columns in. One's going to be for the front cover, one's the back cover, and the column gutter is going to be the spine. I'm just going to use two millimetres for a 32 page book. That's going to be a, a good test amount. But I'm going to add two millimetres, that spine width, I'm going to add that to the width. So it's 299. Now, obviously, you adjust to the spine that you want. Get rid of all the margins, because you want the uh, colour coming right to the edge of the page. Uh, you can Click and unclick that link icon if you want them all to go down simultaneously or not, or do them individually. Do put three millimeters of bleed. That's kind of an overhang, extra uh, area over the sides of the page, which if the cutting is inaccurate, then you're not going to get a thin white strip. So three millimeters for Lulu, um, create, and there you go. So that's the front cover. And on the left, we've got the back cover. You get it now. We've got the spine down the middle. And then around the outside, that bleed, the three millimeter bleed, and some will need five, but you know most of them need three. That's what the red line marks on the outside. So I would save that just as a design shell. And it's really like a template. So you can come back to that later. Just tuck it away and save that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put an image on the front cover. But before I do, I'm going to go into Photoshop just to show you the parameters of this image. It's a portrait oriented image. I'm just going to click the move tool to get rid of those crop uh, tool marks. Go to image and mode. I'm not going to use RGB. That's for screen work. This is for printing. So CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is for black because it's the key color. They're all calibrated to the image size for printing. You want 300 pixels per inch. Don't use pixels per centimeter. Even if you're in a country that is metric, it's just much easier 300 pixels per inch. So you don't need to do anything. Just know that I have got that image with those settings to begin with. So I'm going to go back into InDesign, go to the toolbox. If your rectangle frame tool is not showing, click and hold down there and uh, you'll see the other options and click on the rectangle frame tool. Click and drag right across the front cover, starting way up on the bleed. And then you'll probably need to click on the black arrow just to fine tune that picture box or image box. See how I'm just getting it right up to the edge of the front cover. And then I'm going to place, file, place. I'm going to place the image in there. Click on the image. There it is. Now I'm going to fit it by right clicking and then on fit content proportionally, left click. And there it is. It's, it's fitted, but it's not quite accurate. So I'm going to click on the white arrow. Then when I click on the image, see the little brown activation nodes? That will allow me just to move it about half a millimeter each way. So it's fitting perfectly. It's not much. So that amount of distortion isn't going to be a worry. So I'm just going to check it out there. Yeah, OK, that looks pretty accurate. So I'm going to look at it at a higher quality view display performance and high quality display. And that will just make it look a bit uh, better. It uses a, a little bit more RAM to run there. Click on the type tool, the T for the type tool, click and drag to create a text box. And in that, I'm going to put the title. So I'm going to call this uh, imaginary book Bondi Lifeguards that because that's uh, who is there in that picture. It's a lifeguard riding a board. Highlight it and then go up to size. Oh, yeah, that'll lose 60 points. Just up in the top left there. I'm clicking there and hitting enter. I want to center a line. So just to the top right there. Then I'm going to grab it all again. Change the typeface to a sans serif typeface like Calibri. I'll make it bold. Use that font bold. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. 
Um, probably do a little bit more with this. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to grab it and change the letting. That's the spacing between the lines. And if I if I do a really small letting, you'll see it doesn't look any good. So that's too small. But it was 72. I'm going to put it to 60. Yeah, I like that a bit better. Then go down and double click on this T near the bottom of the toolbox. That brings up the color picker. Use the claws if you need to, because I want to use yellow. Click OK, and there it is. I'm going to go back and click on the black arrow just so I can move that text box about into position. In fact, I might move one edge right to the edge of the page and the other one right to the edge of the page, not out to the bleed. That's just so now because it's center aligned, the text will sit exactly in the center of the page. Now I'm using the arrows on the keyboard to move it around the uh, text down a bit. Now I'm going to click on the type tool again, click and drag to create another text box, this time for the author name. So just put you know, your name or an author name, whatever. Type it in, highlight it. Of course, we're going to make it bigger. So go up to the top left. Oh, Turn it into Calibri, Calibri just for consistency. Then make it bigger, 48 points. Center align it's up near the top middle. And just click on the black arrow. That will probably do. I think the black on the white's fine. I'll just adjust that text box there using the black arrow and just down a bit. Yeah, probably that's not a bad position. Maybe I'll use the arrows and the keyboard just to bring it up slightly. Okay, now if you want to see it with that, all those guides, click on that bottom square and click preview and just click outside that text box. That's what it looks like without all those guides. Those guides will not print, by the way. I'll just move that slightly so you can see it there. Now, when you're ready, click on the rectangle tool. I better put the uh, go back to normal so you can see all the guides, but click on that rectangle tool. And that's just underneath the rectangle frame tool and click and drag right across from the top left down to the bottom right. Uh, including the spine, because it, this is a box in which we're going to put color. Now, I am going to just make sure it's absolutely lined up. So I'm going to click on the black arrow just to adjust it so it snaps to. So I'm just going either way. Okay, it's exactly uh, on the edge of the spine. I'm zooming in using control and plus on the keyboard. To zoom out, you can use control and minus or the hyphen. That's what I'm doing there. Or go via the uh, view and zoom in and zoom out. Now, if you go down to the uh, fill box again at the bottom, near the bottom of the toolbox, double click on that fill box, bring up the color picker. I'm just going to choose a blue. That'll be fine just to show you how it fills up the back cover. Right, well, that is not a bad point now to start bringing in some other images. I'm going to bring in the logo. So I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool, click and drag the logo for the back cover, go file and place just like we did with the image for the cover. And there it is, the Overdog logo. To right click on that will bring up fitting, then fit content proportionally, left click on that. And there it is, fitted proportionally. Uh, I'm gonna put in another picture box and um, I'll use a rectangle frame tool again. And this will be for the barcode. And I'm gonna go file and place. This should be, be becoming pretty much routine by now. And just put that in, that, that'll do that size. I don't need to fit it there for the moment. But I am gonna actually move things around slightly using the black arrow. Now you can do things visually, just move it around. You can see it's pretty straightforward. And I'm gonna bring that picture box in slightly. But say so if you want to be more accurate, click on this ruler up the top and see what happens. Click and drag down, see the guide that comes down. Now the guides can be used to line things up. Now I'm just going to move that up and down a bit and okay, I'll just move it up slightly. Okay, I'll line things up along the bottom. Click on the left ruler and I'm going to get a vertical line and I'm going to use that Okay, because I don't want it too close to the edge. By the way, if you're not seeing the rulers, go to view and it you just need to show rulers. There it is. That's how you'll see the rulers. Okay, now I'm going to fiddle around with these a bit. I'm just in the black arrow. I'm going to move them around right to that corner there. I'm using the arrows on the keyboard. Just, okay, that'll do. That's in position reasonably there. And likewise with this one, I'll just move it around a bit. Okay, I might even put another guide, click on the ruler, click and drag, and because I don't want the text too close to the spine, so I might line up the edge of the barcode with the edge of the text. Now, speaking of which, if you go back to the toolbar and click on the type tool, you can click and drag a text box. Now, I like to start on the pasteboard, just outside of all the other boxes so they don't get mixed up. Now, I've got this text ready earlier, just in a regular Microsoft Word file, select it, 
copy it, so Control C, then Control V for Victor to paste it in. And then you can do the same, um, or you can move that about if you want to, but I'm gonna click on the Type tool, create another text box, and I'm gonna put those critics' comments in there, because I wanna treat them differently to the text up above, and it's kind of good to have them independent there. So Highlight, Control C for Copy, then go back into InDesign, Control V for Paste, and there we have it, we've got the two uh, text boxes. So I'm just gonna line that up a bit so we can see it all a bit better. And the first thing, just click on the black arrow and move the text boxes into a rough position. Of course, you can move these around later. And uh, you see the edge, the right hand edge, I've got that up against one of the guides. I'll move that down a bit. And then have a look at the top one, move that into position and use the guides again, just to position it. You can change this at any stage. Now I wanna go into the type tool because the first thing I'm gonna do is change Bondi lifeguards. I don't want that black and left aligned. I'm gonna highlight that and I'll center align it. Let's change that color to yellow. Go down to the big T near the bottom of the toolbox, double click to bring up the color picker, use the claws to get the yellow if that's what you want. Click OK. Ooh, I'm gonna change that to Calibri as well, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks better than what it was before, but boy, all this text is, needs to be spaced out. Go up to the top right, see where I'm clicking at the top right? I'm going to put five millimeters of space after each paragraph just to break it up a bit. Okay, I think it needs to be a bit bigger. I'm going to grab it all, make it 14 point. You can make it 14.23 if you wanted to. Uh, justify it there. And I'm going to click on the black arrow because see that red box with the cross? It's showing that not all the text is appearing. So uh, there is all the text now. Uh, it has got that red box. We'll come back to that in a minute. That might be just a paragraph mark. But the text underneath the critics' comments, go up to the T in the middle top and click on paper. And this will make it white. Okay, see how that looks now? And But you know what bothers me here? This Sydney Morning Herald, this really needs to be italic. So I'm going to grab that. But you see Minion Pro's only got regular. It hasn't got italic. So here's a bit of a cheat's way to put italics. See this T near the middle that I'm clicking on? And I'm just clicking up to make it about 14 degrees on an angle. Yeah, and now it looks like italics. There's a neat little trick to do. I want to get rid of this hyphenation now. So go up to Type, click on Paragraph, and you'll see there's a hyphenation, hyphenation option. Uncheck that box and we got rid of that one. Click on this paragraph, uncheck that box, all the hyphenation's gone. Handy trick to know. For the moment, I'm just gonna grab the top of the, the paragraph palette and move it over there so it's out of the way. I will go back to that black arrow and just check there isn't anything there. Okay, now that red box of the cross is gone. Uh, by the way, these media, these guides will not print but I'm gonna move them around a bit just to get them just so. Have a look at preview again, click and hold down in that bottom box. If your book has a spine that is more than a few millimeters wide, you'll want to run some text down it at right angles. Easy. Make a text box, type in some text, then select the black arrow and click on the text box. Now go up near the top middle to this rotation control, click down and select minus 90 degrees. This is so the bottom of the text is towards the back cover. Then move the text box into position. I'll delete it here because with such a narrow spine, even a minor slippage during printing will mean the text is slightly left or right of the book's spine. If you have a wider spine, then there is more room for error. Do file and save as now, because that really is the complete cover. We need to do one more thing, and that's export it as a press quality PDF. That's what you would upload to a print on demand company or give to a printing company. And this is the process. You go up to file and you could go to export, but let's use one of the Adobe F presets. Choose press quality. I know you'll want high quality. That's for printing out individual photos. Go press quality. Check it's Adobe PDF print, which it should be. Save. Now you really don't need to do anything on this particular dialog box. See up marks and bleeds. Click on that. Lulu doesn't want all printers marks and I don't think Blurb does either, but it does need this. You've got to click on use document bleed settings or your bleed won't be included. Do that before you export or you'll be in trouble there with a printer. So there you have it. Let's just check the PDF, uh, press quality PDF is there. It's all there and ready to go. And you, there you have it, the three in one cover file. And if you want other videos on InDesign or Photoshop, you might like to check out the other options on this channel, Indie Book Publishing with you and Mitchell. Thank you very much.